Great to be with you all again. Uh, God bless you, the Rock family, uh, here in person and online. Uh, appreciate the invitation to come and to share again, Pastor Brandon, uh, in the midst of this series called Building the Well Within. Building the Well Within. I'm, I'm going to um, skip past a lot of um, introductory stuff and just jump right in. Um, it was the, the founder of the Salvation Army, William Booth, who said, I'm not waiting on a move of God. I am a move of God. Amen. I'm not waiting on a move of God. I am a move of God. And he founded the Salvation Army. <laughs> Have y'all heard of the Salvation Army? <laughs> he, wasn't, he wasn't waiting. The point is, he knew that he wasn't waiting on God to do something extra that he could join. God had already done something in him that he could share. Amen. So when we talk about building the well within, there is a paradigm shift, I believe, that we have to have. Even as Holly was, was sharing, right, there, there are some people who say, God, what is it that you want me to do? Where do you want me to go? Well, you know, all those kind of things. Just, just show me what you want me to do and that kind of thing. But then you have Holly and, and talking about, I saw something and I pulled over. <laughs> right? I pulled over. I have something to share. And even more than just the blessing bag, which is a tangible thing, but there's something from inside. I, I, I want to talk about when the water is stirred up. When the water is stirred up. And we're going to read a story where a man was waiting on something to happen over here. And something ended up happening over here. And there's a lot to this story. And so some things I'm going to go through relatively fast to highlight them. But then we want to just unpack some things. Um, and there's a lot of lessons we can learn from what is in this story. But there are some important lessons we want to learn today from what is missing from this story. So one of the things that you got to understand about the Gospel of John, and as we go through this series, we're going to highlight different things in the Gospel of John concerning water, um, but you got to understand this. Um, one of the things that John said in his own Gospel at the very end, John uh, chapter 21, verse 25, he says this, There are also many other things that Jesus did, which if every one of them were written down, I suppose not even the world itself could contain the books that would be written. John said there are so many things that Jesus did, all the books in the world could not contain them. Okay then, John, how did you choose which stories to include in your narrative? There has to be some intentionality and purpose in every one of these stories that John said, I'm capturing that one. That one needs to be told for generations to come. There are a lot of things that are really, really cool, really, really amazing. But this story here, we want to capture this, and it must be retold over and over and over. And this story we're going to read right here in John chapter 5 with this man who's at the pool of Bethesda is one of those stories. So we've got to couch it to see the, the significance at the very beginning. To pull out, this story is, we can't just read it and go, that was cool. No, this story is very important for what John is trying to communicate to his audience and to his hearers. A theme in the Gospel of John is this, that Jesus is the Son of God and is God. John highlighted the divinity of Jesus more than any of the other Gospel writers. So he's communicating Jesus is God and he's a Son of God come to reveal God. So you get, every time you read anything in John, anything in John, you have to read it with that lens. John's trying to show us in this story that Jesus is God and come to reveal God. And in this story, he's trying to reveal to us that Jesus is God and has come to reveal God. And in this story, John's trying to communicate to us that Jesus is God and has come to reveal God. And so prior to John 4, 5, you see John 4, woman at the well, right? She's come to get physical water, 
and she leaves with an encounter with Jesus. She leaves the, she's not worried about the physical water anymore. She's encountered the living water that Jesus introduced her to. Okay, that's John 4. Now, when we preach a passage from John 5, it's easy for you not to think about John 4 or John 6 or anything else because we're looking at this passage. But remember, John is writing an entire story that the people who are reading his story, he, he's putting things in a particular sequence. So when he points to something in John 5, he is pointing to that with your understanding that you have understood John 4. In John 4, this woman comes to a physical well to get physical water. She leaves with an encounter with Jesus because Jesus introduces himself as the living water. Okay, that's John 4. So we're going to John 5. John 5, John's writing it with you thinking, knowing John 4. That Jesus is living water. And he brings a gift of eternal life that's living water. On the inside of you is living water. So at the end of John 4, John also, prior to going into John 5, he goes, as we're moving, we're going to this, through, this, through this area, uh, and it's this area where Jesus turned water into wine, just to throw that out there to remind you before we get into John 5, right? So now we get into John 5, and this is what happens. After this, a Jewish festival took place, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. By the Sheep Gate in Jerusalem, there is a pool called Bethesda in the Aramaic, which has five colonnades, or five porches. Within these lay a large number of the disabled, blind, lame, and paralyzed. Now, verse 4, which I'm about to read, I put it in italics, is not in contemporary translations, because many say this is not part of the original manuscript, but was added later for context purposes. Waiting for the moving of the water. These people are by this thing, waiting for the moving of the water because an angel would go down into the pool from time to time and stir up the water. Then the first one who got in after the water was stirred up recovered from whatever ailment he had. Now, verse 5, one man was there who had been disabled for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there, watch this, and realized he had already been there a long time. People go, how can Jesus, he, he heals this one guy, then he leaves everybody else. Like, how did Jesus pick up this one guy? We, we don't even know. It's, it's a mystery. No, it's not a mystery. It's not a mystery. He was there a long time. So that's one of the things that separates him from everybody else. It's right. Did y'all see that? <laughs> I'm not making this up. It's right there. Jesus, he comes. And, he, and the thing about it is, when he comes to the scene, it's not clear that he comes to the scene for this guy. Like in Mark chapter 5, where Jesus sailed across the whole sea to cast thousands of demons out of that one man. And then after the guy is free, he gets back in the boat. He sails back across the sea like it was clear. Jesus went over there for the one guy and then left and came back. Here we see that Jesus, he goes to the pool. And it's like he's having some kind of assessment. And when he sees the guy, he realizes this guy has been here for a long time. He engages the conversation with him. And this is what he says. When I find my place again. Okay. Realize he had been there for a long time. And so he says to him, do you want to get well? Sir, the disabled man answered, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. I have no one to put me in the pool when the water is stirred up. That's where we get our title from today. When the water is stirred up. But while I'm coming, someone goes down ahead of me. Get up, Jesus told him. Pick up your bed, pick up your mat, and walk. Now, this statement right here is what gets the party started. <laughs> For two reasons. One we'll see immediately. The second we'll see in a few moments. Pick up your mat and walk. He could have just said, be healed. And the guy gets up and leaps off, you know, just, takes up, jump and leaping like other people have, right? When Jesus healed a lame man, the guy got up and started leaping, right? I'm free, I'm free, I'm healed. He says, pick up your mat and walk. Okay. Instantly, the man got well, picked up his mat and started to walk. Now that day was the Sabbath day. Somebody say, oh. Yeah, he did it again, didn't he? <laughs> he did it again. Did Jesus forget what day it was? Nope. Did Jesus know that if you carry a mat on the Sabbath day, it's considered work and violating the law? Did Jesus know that? Yep. Pick up your mat. I know there are folks who don't like that, but that's why I'm here. 
And there's going to be a really interesting conversation that comes by you not being healed, but by you picking up your mat. <laughs> let's, go, let's continue. Okay. <laughs> and so, verse 10, and so the Jews said to the man who had been healed, this is a Sabbath. <laughs> Did y'all see that coming? Right. This is Sabbath. The law prohibits you from picking up your mat. Now, never mind the man had been lame for 38 years. That's not the thing that stood out. That's not the thing that they're talking about. See, religious people always find something to point out that is fault, that is blame, that is wrong. They're like the sin police, so blinded by their need to correct other people that they can't celebrate somebody's breakthrough. Now, that's a whole message for another time. Let's get back to the story. <laughs> and so, the law prohibits you from picking up your mat. Who, who, who did this? Well, the man who made me well told me to pick up my mat, and he told me to walk. Uh, who, who is this man who told you to pick up your mat and walk? They asked. Well, but the man who was healed didn't know who it was because Jesus had slipped away into the crowd that was there. This man not just before the miracle, but after the miracle, he didn't know who Jesus was. He couldn't even name him. He couldn't say it was Jesus. He tried to point him out, but by that time, Jesus was like, no, see, it's about to get bad. <laughs> I'm not here for that right now, but wait for it. So Jesus is gone. Who, who told you to pick up your mat? Uh, the guy, the guy who healed me, because I just I have a personal core value that uh, if somebody heals me, I do whatever they, they tell me to do. <laughs> it's just, just kind of something I live by, you know. If somebody heals me after 38 years of not being able to walk, if he tells me to pick up my mat, I'm picking up my mat. I don't care what day it is. <laughs> so he's like, I'm not taking responsibility for this. The guy who healed me, he told, he told me. Um, <laughs> Whew, where is he at? Yeah, I don't see him, but uh, it wasn't, I mean, y'all know. I've been here for 38 years. Y'all know me, right? I wouldn't break the law. I wouldn't break the law. However, today is kind of a special day, if you get what I'm saying. <laughs> if you get what I'm saying. Right? Can, can there be a Sabbath waiver for a breakthrough for 38 years? I mean, come on, people. It's like as soon as he picked up his mat, they're like, ah, Sabbath breaker. And so what we end up seeing here, watch this. Jesus, Jesus knew the culture, he knew the custom. That if you get healed, you have to go to the temple to see the priest. And it's the priest who says, you're good to go. And now you can merge back into society. So watch what happens in verse 14. After this, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, see that you are well. Do not sin anymore so that something worse doesn't happen to you. The man went and reported to the Jews, it was Jesus. Yeah, I got his name. It was Jesus. He is the one who made me well. Therefore, the Jews began persecuting Jesus because he was doing these things on the Sabbath. When the water is stirred up, you can look at this passage and go, okay, so talk to me, John. Why is this important? And you don't get the fullness of it just by reading the story itself. You get the fullness of it by seeing why Jesus said, pick up your mat. You get the fullness of this story by seeing how that phrase, pick up your mat, led to this guy picking up his mat which provoked the Jews to highlight a Sabbath violation and to plot against Jesus and to now address Jesus. And Jesus goes, okay, here we go. So I'm going to read quickly, and I encourage you on your own time to read, go, go through this again slowly, but I'm going to read quickly because Jesus is about to go off. <laughs> Y'all want to read what he said? All right. This is a long dialogue. Listen to me. This is a long, actually, monologue because Jesus is going off by. He's just, he's just speaking, boom, 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 boom. And John goes, I want to capture that speech because what Jesus says in this monologue, in this speech, is what people need to hear for generations to come. And if they're going to get this speech, they got to know what preceded this speech. It's the miracle of the man in the pool. 
But the miracle of the man by the pool is not the whole point. It's the conversation that that miracle led to and the revelation that Jesus gives that talks about how Jesus is God and has come to reveal the nature of God. And so Jesus is now being plotted on by these Jews. They said, we are going to kill him. And so verse 17, Jesus responded to them. Okay, now from this point, I'm going to speed, okay? Jesus responded to them, my father is still working and I am also working also. Okay, wait a minute. Okay, I just said I was going to speak, but I got to pause. Jesus heals the man, right? People go, man, you shouldn't have done it on the Sabbath day. Jesus, what's wrong with you? You got problems? What's, what's, ah, my father, he did it. See, this really isn't about all this other kind of stuff. This is about me again pointing to my father and him working through me to prove to you he sent me. Okay? Don't miss this. This is his, you know, when you were in English class, you got that, that, that main sentence, that, that, that the very beginning of the paragraph, right, that says what the rest of the paragraph is going to be about. This is that sentence right here. My father is working in me and he's working through me he's working and i'm working now watch now, now we're going to put the pedal to the metal this is why the jews began trying all the more to kill him not only was he breaking the sabbath but he was even calling god his own father making himself equal to god see this is john's point right here i want to i want to highlight this speech Jesus replied, truly I tell you, the son is not able to do anything on his own, but only what he sees the father doing. Why did I pick that guy? Because the father picked that guy. For whatever the father does, the son likewise does these things. For the father loves the son and shows him everything he's doing, and he will show him greater works than these, so that you will be amazed. Again, highlighting like this guy had to be at least considered the most difficult situation. He'd been there a long time. And so Jesus heals him and then says, there's going to be greater things than that. Amen. Let's continue. Truly, I tell you, verse 24, anyone who hears my word and believes him who sent me, there's that theme again, has eternal life and will not come under judgment, but has passed from death to life. But I have a greater testimony than John. I'm, going, I'm skipping to verse 36 because earlier he goes, he goes, y'all believe what John was saying, right? And, and you believe the testimony of John, but I have a greater testimony than John's because of the works that the Father has given me to accomplish, these very works I'm doing to testify about me that the Father Father has sent me the father who sent me has himself testified about me you have not heard his voice at any time and you haven't seen his form you don't have his word residing in you because you don't believe the one he sent you pour over the scriptures because you think that you have eternal life in them yet they testify about me but you are not willing to come to me that you may have life you see why John was like oh everyone needs to know this but I can't just tell them this until I show them, show them what started it. Take care of your bed and walk. I don't accept glory from people, but I know you, that you have no love for God within you. I have come in my Father's name, and yet you don't accept me. If someone else comes in his own name, you will accept him. How can you believe since you accept glory from one another, but don't seek the glory that comes from the only God? Do not think that I will cause accuse you to the Father. Your accuser is Moses, on whom you have set your hope. For if you believe Moses, you would actually believe me because he wrote about me but if you don't believe what he wrote how you believe my words <laughs> if I had two mics I would drop this one <laughs> Jesus went off and I left some things out he went off and John's like, see that piece right there? Yeah, but I gotta include this story first. So many times we just get stuck on the story. All right, we try to we just break that. No, 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 there's, there's a point of that particular story. He's pointing to this. 
And so here's what happens now. Another situation, like the woman at the well, came from physical water, didn't get physical water, encountered living water that was in Jesus. Another situation, the guy says, Jesus says, do you want to be healed? Yeah, you know, but the water, when the water stirred up, there's no one to take me over there to put me in there. People get in front of me, and he's like, take me bed and walk. Another situation where there's, there's a focus on physical water, and the guy has an encounter with Jesus and doesn't need the physical water anymore. And he's waiting for the water in the pool to be stirred up. But he's not aware that there's water in the person that is stirred up. And the woman encountered it at the well. This guy encountered it at the pool. And over and over and over, you see these things happen where um, Jesus encounters people. One of the things that's missing from this story is Jesus' invitation. It's not like Jerry who said, Jesus, my daughter is sick. Can you come to my house? It's not like the Syrophoenician woman said, Jesus, my daughter has a demon. Can you come and set her free? This is not like blind Bartimaeus, son of David, have mercy on me. This is not like the ten lepers, have mercy on us, Jesus. Can you heal us? This is not like that. No one's inviting Jesus. Jesus just rolled up on them. <laughs> what do we take from the fact that the, what, one of the things that's missing is that there's no invitation for Jesus. Instead, we see an initiative. Jesus initiated this encounter, which is what people do when their water is stirred up. They pull over, don't they, Holly? They pull over. When your water is stirred up, you don't wait for water to be stirred up. What's missing is the invitation. Nothing that's missing is this man's knowledge of Jesus. He didn't even know who Jesus is. I mean, even after he gets healed, like, who, who did it? You know what? Ah, I didn't get the man's name. Man, that's kind of rude. I mean, the man just changed my life. I didn't even, let me, let me find him. Hold on, let me, I don't know. But let me go to the temple first because I got to get, you know, got to get the priest to clear me up. He doesn't. And so we don't see people like Bart Bartimaeus, son of David, have mercy on me. Like, I know you can heal me if you want to because I've heard about you. Not here. One thing that's missing is this guy's knowledge. He's, he doesn't even know. But Jesus initiates the encounter with him. Just like the woman at the well, Jesus initiates the encounter with him. Just like in John chapter 9, the man who was born blind, Jesus initiates the encounter with him. Right? He spits on the ground, puts clay on the man's eyes, tells him to go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is two miles away, by the way. Kind of insensitive to tell a blind man, go two miles away. But anyway, it's a whole other thing. So, so certainly... Certainly, there, there had to be some help, right? But Jesus initiated. And when the disciples said, why is this man born blind? Jesus goes, that's not the point. God's going to get glory. There it is again. These things point to God. They point to God. And they point to the fact that Jesus was sent by God. And what has he been sent by God to do? To reveal the heart of God. To be the savior for all of humanity. For those who put their faith in Jesus Christ. And then those who put their faith in Jesus Christ, just like Jesus said, in you will be a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Last week, Pastor Brandon was, was sharing, he was talking about contending for, for, for healing and contending for what God's wanting to do in, in, you know, uh, through, through the rock. And I just want to add on to that. And I want to tell you the same thing Paul told Timothy, stir up what's in you. Stir up what's in you. You and I are to be walking around with water that is stirred up. And when our water is stirred up, our compassion is hot. When our water is stirred up, we pull over. When our water is stirred up, but over time, over time, we, get, we, we theologize our way out of being involved in the move of God. Uh, well, is, is this really what God has called me to do? I don't feel led to pull over right now. I don't, feel, I don't think this is where God wants me. I don't think. And next thing you know, you've been on the sidelines for a while. And the water that was stirred up has now become a stagnant pool. I just want to tell you today, stir it up. Paul to Timothy, stir it up. Stir up the gift that is in you. Stir up what is in you. Stir it up. Stir it up. 
Stir, and the way that you stir it up is getting in the game. You get in the game. You get in the game. Stop silencing the word of God in your, in your, the, the voice of God in your mind because you allow your fear to over, override the courage. Stop, stop trying to put the Holy Spirit on mute when you don't want to hear from him, but then when you need a financial breakthrough, you want to hear from God. Like, stop, like stop doing that. Like he, will, he, he either leaves all of your life or none of your life. You, you can't pick and choose. you got to be all in, all in. So don't, don't think that the miraculous is going, listen, don't think that revival is going to happen from this stage. It ain't. Revival happens in you. You're not waiting on a move of God. You are a move of God. Stir it up. I can tell you story after story after story about how God changed some of my, my theology from things that had happened to me, um, things that I, that, I, that I saw. I remember uh, I remember being at Applebee's one time, and this lady, our, our server, really nice lady, and I just happened to notice something seemed wrong with her feet. It just seemed it just seemed wrong with it. It was just weird. It, it, how her, how she was walking her feet. It's just it's like she had to throw her foot at each one as as she. It just seemed weird. Um, and because I noticed that, I knew there's got to be something. There's a reason why God has has me noticing this instead of focusing on this raspberry mango lemonade that I love so much. Like God, wait, wait. He says he says what are you doing? He says I pointed it out to you because I'm stirring. I'm I'm stirring. John, we got to do something here. Gotta do something. Long story short, hey, can I pray for you? Uh, yeah, she's like, sure. You know, so when she got a little break or whatever, we went to another side of Applebee's where she could sit down. And she could sit down and put her legs on the thing. My brother's there, his, his girlfriend is there. They're like, what's gonna happen? I'm like, well, I'm about to show you. And so we lay down, and I, I, so I'm asking God, what do you want to do? Do, do, I, do I speak, do I lay hands, do I, what do you want me to do, right? And so it's just like this, when Jesus realized he had been here a long time, he said to him, Right? You're, every step of the way, you're saying, what, 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 what? Some of you want the whole 10 steps before you make the first move. Steps nine, step, steps two through 10 come after step one. Here, here I'm telling you, step, step two through 10 come after step one. You do step one, then the next step. Then it, now some of you want, because your whole type A, you want, you control everything. You can't do that with God. If you want to be involved, you better get, a, get an alignment, right? When he gives you step one, do step one. Do step one. So I, I, I don't know how this is going to work. So just step by step by step. So she sits down like, God, now what? Well, tell her, stretch out your feet. Okay, stretch out your feet. Okay, God, now what? Okay, put your hands on her ankles. Okay, God, now what? Then just, just pray. Pray, okay, pray what? Just pray for healing. Pray for healing. So as I'm praying for healing, she's literally uh, sitting on this, on this bench with her legs out on the bench, and she, she kind of goes over like this. I'm like, God, what's going on? He said, don't worry about it. I'm like, well, uh, we're in a restaurant and she's still on the clock. I need an explanation. I need her to come back up. She's going down. She's going down. I'm praying. I'm praying. Now I'm praying. Lord, get her back up. Get her back up. Get her back up. <laughs> so she, she begins to come back up. She, come, she goes. So I'm like, okay, what? I take my hands off. She goes, my ankles feel light. My ankles feel light. She begins to walk around. I couldn't do this before. I couldn't do this. I feel strength in my ankles. I feel strength. Oh, hey, man, praise God. So we're all happy and everything, right? Like so something has happened. She goes, I felt like some things were being taken out and some things were being put in. Now, now I felt like there was an evil spirit there, so I understood what was taken out, but I didn't get what was being put in. I didn't ask no question. Like, okay, well, whatever. Like a week later, me and my brother are still talking about it. We're both home from college and everything. And so we're like, right, let's go back and see how she's doing. Because part of me is like, I don't know. I, I just... You make sure this thing stuck. You know, it was kind of weird. I need to follow. Come on now. I'm just, I need to follow up. It's, what's happening here? So I go back to her and I say, I say, hey, uh, is, is so-and-so there? And the hostess, because this, this, she was a Caucasian girl, right? Which I'm in Arkansas, so there's some things, okay? So, so, so when me and my brother come out to Applebee's and we say, hey, is so-and-so here? They're like, she don't, should I even tell them if she's here or not? I don't, I don't know if I should. Is it safe to, listen, we were here, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I'll be right back. So she goes, lady comes back up. She goes, oh, I'm so glad you all came back. You'll never believe what happened. I said, yes, I will. She goes, 
When, when, I, when I got home, when I got home, I was talking to my boyfriend about what happened and my feet used to be flat and I got like a, an arch in both my feet now, about three quarter inch arch in both my feet. I said, well, can you help me understand what, what was being put? What? She said, well, the doctor said I was missing some bones in my feet. That's why my ankles flop like that and God had put, must have put some bones in my feet. Oh, God put bones in your feet. He put bones in your feet. Are you kidding me? Listen, guys, I'm a normal person, but I just heard the Holy Spirit tell me this stuff, and I just did it. That's it. That's it. So don't go healing anointing. Don't go. No, don't, don't, no, no. Just hear him. It's simple, y'all. It's simple. Just hear him. And I began to teach other people to do the same thing because I don't want folks thinking there's something special about me. No, no, no. It's a, it's a simple thing. My youth group started doing that, praying for people, and stuff started happening to me. People with asthma being healed and, 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 and broken bones being fixed. I mean, the, the youth group started doing it. And then adults in the congregation started. It's like this is the thing, y'all. This is what happens when the water is stirred up. So you got to decide what kind of life you want to live. Do you want to be a pond or do you want to be a river? You got to decide. I don't know about you, but I want to be a river. I want to be a river and see what happens when the water is stirred up. God bless you, Rock. We'll see you next time.